Yo, what's the word, gang? So we got this whole situation when it comes down to Lil Rod, right? And Lil Rod, we did an interview with Lil Rod not too long ago. You know what I'm saying? And um, he broke down his whole story, his life story. Like, he was working with Drake. He was working with um, Miguel. He was working with um, Mary J. Blige. You know what I'm saying? Um, Faith Evans. You know what I'm saying? The list goes on. But he also was working with Diddy. The new allegations against John Diddy Combs, a music producer, is accusing hip-hop mogul of sexually assaulting him and forcing him to have sex with prostitutes. This is now one of several sexual assault lawsuits filed against Combs in recent months including a lawsuit from the R&B singer Cassie that was settled last year. Okay, hey, cause I run shit. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? I run shit. Good yeah, you do. Yeah. Little Rod ain't worth giving this kingdom to if we don't control his publishing. I can solve his efforts with three other human beings. He's eating at our table, and I like his backstory, but you need to have other people. We, it's hard to work with him unless we have his pub. He's a piece of shit human, but we do not need his talent unless... We can work with him. Hey, hey guys, how y'all doing? Hey, hey, Listen, I'll be back. I can't really say much right now. My hands are tied doing so much at this present moment. Literally. I, got I just saw my name across and I saw you guys. You guys are my friends. Salute, salute. Hey, uh, reach out reach out to reach out to me in my DMs, bro. Let's let's set let's set we're gonna set this room up. Okay? All right, I got you. Chuck in the salute. building. What's good, what's good? And then what's in it? You the real MVP, I promise. You got rooms back to back, baby. <laughs> salute. Little right here. Get it, bro. Appreciate you coming to the platform and uh blessing us with this interview. Absolutely. Anytime, my bro. So like bro, we like to take it back. You know, uh Lil Rod, like coming up. I know you're from Chicago, right? Absolutely. All right, just let them know uh where they can find you like on social media real quick before we start. So you can find me across all platforms, Lil Rod made it. L I L R O D made it. You know what I'm saying? M A D E I T everywhere. Dope, dope. So, like, take us back, bro. Like, I like to start in the beginning, like, Chicago, growing up in Chicago. Say, start, like, your teenage years, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, early high school or something. Was you, like, playing ball? Like, what was you into? Who was Lil Rod then? Was it music? I, I started when I was 13 recording, so, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I grew up in the church. Um, I was playing the drums for the church probably when I was, like, five years old. Um, went from there, started playing guitar, playing bass and piano. Pretty much anything with, with strings I play it. And I never forget, I was 13 years old. My aunt took me into the studio and had me uh, play bass on some, some things. And ever since then, it's just like shh, rocket. By the age 18, I played on at least 32 albums. You know what I'm saying? Damn. So moving around, yeah, like I didn't even get a uh, high school diploma, bro. I had to like drop out. So like, you know what, what was that like? I was on the road. Like, that, that. like, okay, you Chicago, you know, you in the church, you doing the music. You know what I'm saying? So you are in high school at the time. So like, you know, we hear about Chicago. So what's it like um, navigating through that, like the gang life, things like that? Yeah. So, um, you know, like I say, I grew up in church. My whole family, everybody is missionaries, pastors and all that shit. Right. <laughs> but uh, I live in the hood. Right. All my homies. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gang bang, drug dealers and all that. Right. And so I was a, I was a guy who was obviously going to the studios or on tour, shit like that. But I needed to because we also lived in poverty. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, that that's how I ate. You know what I mean? I got tired of, as a little kid wearing the pro wings. And so I started buying my own shoes. You know what I mean? So um, I ran away when I was 14 and, and I've been on my own since then. You know what I mean? So the gang shit, bro, like, you know, <clears throat> West Side, Chicago. I know you from the South Side, right? So, you know, most niggas from the West Side didn't go to the South Side. And vice versa, you know what I mean. Over east was just, just, just ain't safe. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know where what I'm mean? from. Over east. Yeah, over east. You know what I'm saying. But I, um, uh, I grew up on the west side, but I worked a hell of a lot on the south side, and I hung over east. You know what I'm saying? With with all my my friends. So I was that guy. I was probably around danger, but just didn't notice it. Or I wasn't scared. You know what I'm saying? So. I would start bringing my friends from the south side to the west side, my friends from the west side to the south side, little stuff like that. And, you know, and it started inside the music, you know what I mean? So it was like that even with the musicians. The musicians on the west side didn't didn't rock with, with the ones on the south side. But you know what? The south side niggas is the ones who, who, who was getting them checks, you know what I mean? Uh, and But west side niggas, they groove a little different. So uh, I, I can say... You know, I spent majority of my of my time 
on both of the sides, you know what I mean? Got you. So like you saying you was being paid, so you was being, being paid from the beginning or it took you a little while to start to get paid? I started getting getting bread when I was like 13, 14. Got you. And um, so was it like like your, your tone of music? Was it more on the R&B side? Was you dealing with rappers? Like what was it? Yeah. So I, I ain't hit the I ain't hit the uh, R&B rap side until like maybe like 20, 21, you know what I'm saying? So majority of it was like like gospel jazz you know what i mean classical shit like that um but when i when i got like 19 20 years around that that's when i started touring with you know i went out with like avant you know what i'm saying uh tyrese and and you know shit goes on from there and how did these people like you said that um you know about what you say about age 18 you had been on how many albums 32 what? 32. So, like, how did you get them placements? Was it somebody in your life, you know what I'm saying, was plugging you in, or was it just something that just came across your table? So, somebody who, who I call my godfather, uh, he, 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 he found me at, at some community choir, like, concert. I can't remember what it was, but uh, long story short, he was a, a music producer. So, at that rate, bam, he started putting me on. But, you know, you know, you know how you go to concerts and certain people are opening up and all that? So, I'm playing with a group that's opening up for an act, and then the act, the actual act, they're there, they see you playing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, who is that guy? He's young. I'm probably the youngest guy on the stage, finessing a certain way. So, bam. Word of mouth, it kind of spread. So I'm working way before there was a YouTube or, uh, you know what I'm saying, any way to Google people. It was just word of mouth, which, in my opinion, that shit was the dopest shit. But You know what I mean? We we grind a little different uh, back in the day. Shit now is so easy accessible. It's like, you know what I mean? Nobody works for it and nobody appreciates it. But um, I was just young, bro. I was young. I was putting in the work, bro. I was, you know what I mean, finessing it. Uh, the bass guitar, that's kind of where I, I made my name from. Uh, I was finessing that shit as, you know, a certain way that other people wasn't. And that word started spreading. So, as you know, people just started calling. Everything that I got, majority of it came to me. So, um, you ever watch the thing? Uh, 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 you ever watch The View? So, I did the theme song with Mary J. Blige. Um, I didn't ask for that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't shoot for it. A lot of a lot of people um, working in the studio trying to submit records, bro. I haven't been working to submit a record on an artist, bro, probably in the last four or five years, bro. Everything that I, I've gotten has come directly to me, landed right to me. You know what I'm saying? Okay, um, now, like, during that time frame, it was, was it, like, an artist that you had got into and what you worked with that maybe you seen, like, okay, now it's taking off. It's, like, it's doing something different than normal. Rephrase that for me. Like, during that time frame, like, was it an artist? Like, now you're, like, 20 years old, 21. Was it an artist that you worked with that made it, like, when you started working with that person, you seen, like, okay, you elevating a lot more than usual? Well, um, it's hard to tell. Again, like, so you got some musicians um, who who would, like, work with an artist, and that's who they work with, right? For me, I've always been a freelancer. You know what I'm saying? I've never just worked with this one artist, you know what I'm saying? So at the time, God knows who else I was working with. You know what I mean? It might be yeah, this artist this week, the next one, that one this week, that one. Well, hell, they all might be in the same week. You know what I'm saying? So it's just hard to really say. All I know was I was working, I was lit, my bills was, was getting paid. You know what I'm saying? And, and nobody could tell me anything. Dope. So, and let me see like some of your list of the people that you work with, like Stevie Wonder. Was that around that time? Nah, we did Stevie in 2015. Okay, Music, Soul Child, T-Pain, Mary J. Blige, Drake, King, Lost Faith, Evan, oh, yeah. Miguel, mm -hmm. R. Kelly. So it's a song. Yeah. Absolutely. So now you're in your 20s like, and you're getting placements with, what you, like back then, what was it, like R. Kelly? Or did that so, come later on? So, so, so the placements started probably 2014-ish. Uh, Probably. Uh, so again, majority of my career has been a musician. So um, I started producing uh, probably 2011. So then I started getting a uh, uh, placement. What's crazy is the first the first artist who I actually produced uh, uh, that that made some 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 noise out here was Music Soul Child, and he was the he's actually the last single that I dropped in uh, the fourth quarter last year uh, as an artist. So. I'm in my artistry. My artistry started probably about a year and a half to two years ago. Um, but, you know, I started working with Warren Campbell and Music Soul Child was his artist at the time. And so that's kind of how all the placement started coming. Warren Campbell, he's a he's a legend music producer uh, out here. He 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 uh he's married to uh the Mary Mary group and that's his group as well. And so 
I started working with them uh, upon them at first, and then we started becoming partners. Uh, so that's kind of like around that time, 2015, bam, the, the uh, 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 Stevie Wonder comes lay, laying in my lap and et cetera. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's pretty much how those placements start coming. It wasn't any, like, was it a difference? Because I noticed, like, a lot of producers, they seem like they'll critique, they, like, once they get into the artist mode, they'll critique a lot more than usual. Was that something you was going through? Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. My uh, so I my first song I dropped was uh this song called Win. I'm I pro I'm probably still a little sensitive about listening to that record, but uh I just I you know I just couldn't get my my voice right. You know what I'm saying? Every no many times, no matter how many times I cut it, I recut it so many times, I remixed it. So I mixed records myself, bro. I sent the record out to have it mixed. It's like the guy brought it back. It didn't sound nowhere like I did it. I mean, it's just so much. And I had to tell myself, I think you're struggling now with an artist. You're, you're, you're judging yourself way too much now. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I had to really start producing myself and finding out to just get out of, get out of the way, bro. We, we definitely struggle with that shit a little bit harder uh, when, when it's us. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So, like, how was it working with um, T Pain? Like, was like a lot of these records was they like done in the studio, or you had to send the stuff in, or was you actually working with the actual people? So, I just started working with T Pain probably a little bit over two weeks, maybe three weeks ago. So, um, I was sitting here and I'm supposed to be finishing up some records uh, for myself. Uh, I got some rappers uh, I signed in Chicago. Some of them sitting down in the goo now. Uh, and I was supposed to be mixing their stuff, getting ready to uh, have it released. And then I get a I get a phone call uh, from a homie of mine who's actually up in the studio. Uh, he's the engineer for T Pain, and he's like, "Yo, T said, can you pull up now?" N normally, on a situation like this, you know, I would say no because you know I'm at the point where I'm putting my work and what I got going on first, right? Uh, but Jazzy Faye is one of my homies, and he had uh, already been trying to get me in. With, with T Pain like last year, you know what I'm saying? But they're in Atlanta, and so um, so I I just couldn't I couldn't miss this opportunity, bro. You know what I mean? So what was crazy is we first got in the studio and and, and uh I I started setting up. So I come in with a, you know a couple of guitars and basses and keys and all that stuff. And you know they making they cracking jokes like yo man he just rolled a whole band in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So many jokes, <laughs> right? I mean. You know what I mean? And, and I'm just like, in my head, I'm just like, all right, cool. Just wait till we set up. You know what I'm right. saying? But mm -hmm. it, is, it is funny. Some niggas would have folded right then and there, bro. You know what I'm saying? And and then we we, we halfway clashed a little bit because uh, uh I should have asked him what's his process of working. Because, you know, he's a music producer as well. You know what I'm saying? And so I didn't ask what happened was he was making a beat. And then you know I sync I sync my uh my system with his with the click and bam I start building on top of him so he's like All right, you want to go or you want me to go <laughs> so at this rate we like we trying to figure it out so I put my headphones on and I start making but uh uh some parts to the song and turns out uh, I thought I muted myself it was still playing so <laughs> it was just weird so at that point it took us about maybe two or three hours to warm up to each other and you know I was like man you know I should have asked what's your process etc so at that rate we got to talking and then it was on uphill bro we we, we did we did two weeks uh, at record plant in, in Los Angeles uh, we cut a lot of records you know what I mean but even even getting him warm to you know uh, my producing uh, my my production ideas, he had to warm up to it. But then it got to the point where, you know, you gain that artist's trust. They see what you got in the room. Then at that rate, you know what I'm saying, we, we start moving a little different. And he, he's a cool guy, man. One of the most genuine guys I ever met. I think that's a dope part about him. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And also funny. Who is that? Somebody you want to say something? Uh-uh. Go oh, ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, so just like any artist, you know what I mean. You got to warm up. You know when you're dealing with an artist of that that caliber too. You also that there's a uh, there's always a space of of wondering: Is this guy coming in? Is he a groupie, or is is he's gonna be someone who's gonna ask to take a picture with me, or he's gonna uh, you know steal or ask to borrow? My, you know what I'm saying? Those type of uh, things that you, when you first deal with an artist, you got to kind of get past that, and so. Once we got past that, he realized, oh, this guy ain't here trying to take a picture. He ain't fanning out. He ain't this, this. You know what I mean? He, he he's just a cool, genuine person. And and then that's that. So you know, we working, and um, uh, there's a lot more 
um, getting ready to happen. I'm supposed to go back to Atlanta to work on some more stuff, but we probably got about 15 records in in those two mm-hmm. weeks. Wow, that's dope. Yeah. And you got to tell us, bro, like, how did how did you get tapped in with Drake and Drake yeah. sampled that um, song of yours? So, um, this is a guy named David Sebastian. Um, I was producing him. I started working with David probably, I don't know, 2016. The young guy would always come up to my studio. He was homeless at the time, and uh, you know, but I felt like he was very, very talented. So I worked with him. Uh, long story short, he ended up popping up, popping off. He's uh, he, he's got a couple of singles that hit, hit, made some noise. He made it to Forbes magazine, and uh, he got a deal with, with Warner Brother. And so I was working with him last year. And uh, so his manager, uh, what is his manager's name? His, na- his manager's name is Matt Babel. So Matt was in the studio a couple of times doing the, the recording process. And so when you're in a, when you're in a studio with me, uh, you know, it's, it's, I ain't an average, beat, I'm not a beat maker. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't the average producer. So it's a little different. So people see the creative process and they love it. And so Matt was sitting there. He's like, hey, bro, uh, you got something that can, you know, we can put in this in this song here for sure so i sent them uh my song the real me they liked it we closed on the deal in, in 24 hours and bam the song comes out just like that oh that's what's up that's what's up and that song when it went went like what four or five times platinum i gotta check it made some noise <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when a record get out and start spinning man i i I typically try not to look at it, and and I look at mine. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at mine because, uh, you know, you know, of course, if I'm spending some marketing or something like that, but if I if I produce on a record or or somebody else's stuff, I try to just like be surprised when when ASCAP hit me up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, what is this? We got an extra little bump here. You know what I mean? Or, because I feel like if you watching and you anticipating. And it doesn't get that, then it, you know what I'm saying. You start feeling some type of way. So I just I try to take my mind off that and just let let the song do what it do. Big facts, bro. It's like the stock market right now. Yeah, that shit, boy. So let me ask you, like, so I know you said you like you know pretty much freelance, do your own thing. So have anybody came at you and wanted you exclusive to work with them only? Absolutely. And how did how did you handle that? That shit happens all the time. Uh, I got people who try to buy my publishing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and and mainly like 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 legend producers who understand the value of my work um uh, they try to they try to buy my my uh my publishing you know what i mean or they try to sign me directly to them and i just tell them i always i kindly tell them uh you don't have enough money <laughs> you know what i'm saying because i i know my worth you know what i'm saying i know my network i it's it's you, you could bring me a million dollars that's not enough you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i see myself to be like on the level of what yay is now you know what I mean? Once I get there, I'm not there yet, but I definitely feel like I have all the potentials to be there or even better. So with that being said, we building up a brand here and not necessarily building somebody else's. So nobody could get me to come and just work exclusively with them. That's impossible. Was you ever inspired by like, you know, being from Chicago? Was it any people that inspired you like producing like uh, Kanye West? You know what I mean? Uh, of course. Yeah, of course. So I was inspired by, you know, Kanye West, the Timberlands, the... Um, Warren Campbell, like I said, um, uh, uh, I don't even know if I should mention his name, but hell, he 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 did what he did. R. Kelly, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, uh, it, it was this guy named Tommy Sims. Tommy Sims was was he was more so on the on the classic like country side as well. So um, and it's it's probably another good hot ten producers that I'm not even mentioning that uh, I definitely looked up to and and, and uh, come to mind when I'm working. You know what I'm saying? What's your favorite sound like to produce right now? R and B. Got you. And like with your did you have a relationship with Miguel or it was just the same thing, like uh, you know, they tapped you in and uh you did what you did. Yeah, tapping in, uh, did what he did. We got a it's a single out um that uh I produce what is it what is it called? It's called uh 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 God Fear shit, I don't know the last it just came out in November. Uh, Miguel is on it, uh, Sebastian and, and, and Buddy. Uh, so, and we were in the studio. I built a catalog on them. So, uh, we're supposed to be getting back in to finish up the rest of this record. But also, as an artist, I got a song with Miguel. It's called Love Language. Uh, 
probably going to be dropping by the end of this year. Dope, because I heard your son, like, first time I, I maybe was aware of you, I was at Clubhouse, and uh, I was in a room, and they had Keisha Cole in there, and uh, they was, like, making a beat, and then you came in, and you was like, let me play some keys or something. I forgot what it was, but you was like, send it over, and the shit just started sounding totally different. I'm like, well, who is this dude? <laughs> yeah, I think I remember that. I st we still got that track. We supposed, we in, we in with her on Saturday. Here. Dope, dope. And, uh, I'm gonna bring that back up so we can finish that. Yeah, that's that's. I that totally was forgot all about track. that. She was like doing some notes on there. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. I'm like club. That's like my first time really on Clubhouse. I think, and I was Clubhouse is dope as hell. <laughs> yeah, boy, we was having uh, shit. I think we all was drinking that night too together. <laughs> yeah, boy. Oh, dope, dope, bro. So like, tell us about the record that's up top, bro. Uh, Lil Rod, King Los, Fresh Over Me. Yeah. So um, so that's a record. I, shit, when did I do that? I did the beat in September of 2020, right? So what's crazy was, so, hey, I, I'm always trying to put people on from the city, right? So long story short, it's a it's a it's an artist from Chicago who I was trying to help. I don't think he understood who I was, but he his manager put me in, in, in tune with him, right? I'm like, I'm gonna help the little guy out. So we get out here. Uh, the first session, he's super late to. All right, cool. We worked. Then the next day, he was forever on his way, but never showed up. So this beat is one of the beats that I made for him. You wow. know what I'm saying? And so um, I'm like, I ain't letting this beat go to waste. So I started thinking, what can I do with it? And uh, you know, I started coming up with the melody in my head, uh, just driving. You know what I'm saying? Me and one of my homies. And so that's pretty much how the record started. And I hit up Los, like, yo, uh, pull up. And I, I hit up uh, Fresh, and I told him pull up too. Uh, and so we in the studio, we just all start vibing. So uh, Los laid his parts down, and I came behind him and laid my parts, and then uh, Fresh uh, laid his part. But he took he took forever um, writing it. I thought maybe he wasn't interested because he's just over there quiet. You know, he's just sitting there and, and you know, messing with his, you know, the, the weed. And then he's like, maybe 45 minutes later, after the music is gone, he's like, all right, cool, I'm ready. <laughs> he goes in there and lays a verse. That verse, y'all got to go read the lyrics, man. His 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 verse was very very like intricate in so many ways. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. And I thought as a music producer, I feel like uh, what me and Los had already uh, going on kept the attention. You know what I'm saying? So it was worth listening to uh, Fresh's verse in the third verse. So I just I threw that there, and at that rate. You know, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm finna drop this as a single. So I actually did the video last year around this time, actually. Uh, uh, I was just doing videos like crazy. You know what I mean? Not knowing when shit coming out. I just got videos ready to go. You know what I mean? And, and we did this video. And I decided to drop it. And uh, I'm hoping it's going gonna, it's gonna to make some noise. That's dope, bro. That's dope. I'm going to play it in just a second. But before I do that, I'm going to open up the floor. Do anybody got any questions? Yeah, I got a uh, producer's question. Uh, I'm a novice. I think I'm using the right word. I heard you talk about the bass. Uh, well, first of all, how you doing, man? I ain't even greet, greet you. It's King John. King John, how you doing, man? I'm great, man. Yourself? Uh, yeah. So, uh, and I'm asking it, bro. Pleasure to ask you a question. I love productions. Love hearing about it, right? So, number one, uh, you, do you start your production off? With your bass line, melody, or your drums? Um, I have no creative way to start the creative process but to be creative and free. So um and I used to I used to fight with that early on for sure. Um, um I've learned to now trust my gut, right? Some may argue that the gut actually might think before the brain thinks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so for me, when I sit down, I don't know half the time what I'm about to do when I'm actually on some creative shit um unless like i'm going in with a, an intent with another artist for example like all right cool look uh so i was in with with uh what's my man name uh party next door right i was in with puff and party next door we working and and everything party was playing sounds like party you know what i'm saying and so for me i don't want to be the guy doing the same beats that everybody's doing it's like what are we doing we all battling like the same sound and shit like what what's different so um I, 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 I pulled party to the side. I said, man, I feel like as a music producer, I'm not pushing you unless I do something different. Said, okay, what do you mean? So uh, his stuff is pad heavy. Uh, let me see how I can I explain it for everybody else. Like his stuff would be sound like more orchestrated. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
like drama shit in the background. Or NPC. Yeah, with yeah, with 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 a with a dope ass beat behind it, right? So I'm like, I want to create something different. So I'm like, for him, this is when I'm like, let's try me pulling out the bass guitar and putting it through some, some different filters and then playing bass and chords against that and, and then put a drum beat on it that way. You know what I'm saying? So I found the melody and the groove first, then I put the drum beat on it. And then we wrote. Now, them two, uh, uh, they fighting over the song because now, now, now Party wanted it on this record and Puff wanted it. You know what I mean? That's something they got to deal with. But I felt like I did my thing as far as, you know, uh, doing something different. Now, from as far as me, when I sit down, I don't know. But melody is, is important. You know what I'm saying? And so we're not just making the drum beat, but the drum beat got to make some sense. So um, I, w- I would like to start with the melodies and, you know, everything else around that and then with the beat later but I've, i have done some with the drum beat and then you know what i'm saying so you you uh you play slap bass or or are you a are you a are you well versed in funk yeah. i do it all i do it all bro okay. so 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 that's kind of one of the reasons why when i was young I, I was playing on so many records so i grew up under some legend bass players too um and i had one who who was a slap king and then one who was a fingering king you know what i'm saying and so um, but sometimes in the music that I was doing, like like they they liked it, this guy that was playing bass. I was in the middle, finger and slap. So it's like I would probably if they doing a session, it's ten songs, but then they need two of different. I'd be the guy that's on the session with them too. You know what I'm saying? So I, I overdubbed a lot of people back in my day who who wasn't doing it. Okay, so I just got two more. I'll leave. Who's the best? Bass player, your uh, Lil Rock. <laughs> aside, aside from you, aside from you, you know. that's hard to say, bro. Because my my music is not like the type of music I like. It's not just in one box, so it's hard, bro. That's a real hard thing. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, with, with that being said, um, uh, I'd have to say if I was forced to have to say it, then you got to put the credentials with it. Then I would say Marcus Miller. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. I'm gonna I'm 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 leave that, but all right. One last one. This is a Chicago question. I from Chicago. I'm thinking about starting to try to make some house. Do you think if I did a funk bassline right first and then laid my beat down, sped it up, that'll make some good house? It's a possibility, just depending on how your groove is going. But it's a possibility. Thanks. Absolutely. Any other questions? Yeah, I got a question. <clears throat> what What do you when you're creating your material? What do you think is better for you to do? You write first, or do you come up with the with the melody first? Uh, I've done both. I've I've heard lyrics in my head and had no idea, you know, what what was going on. I've I've written hooks, you know what I'm saying, and then laid it and, and came behind it, and and then started doing melodies. But uh, I typically like to to start with the melodies, bro. You know what I mean? Start with the melodies, and then and then um, you know, find a way to relax my mind and and attack it. A, a different way so you basically let the melody kind of like talk to you and that's how you come up with the lyrics exactly oh yeah so i was in the studio last week with, with a new artist right and i'm making the beat right and and she uh she's just writing on the side in her notepad and i'm looking at her like i ain't gonna stop you but <laughs> you you don't know we're gonna get the melodies first because melody is is everything. So <clears throat> I don't know if you guys remember when you guys was a kid, y'all walking around here singing songs, but you really didn't even know what y'all was saying. You know what I'm saying? But you singing that melody, bro. Because melody connects with a person uh, most of the time before words. I I still don't know what Michael Jackson's saying when he's saying, I'm saying to Marcus, Michael Scott. I'm saying, I still don't know what the hell he's saying, but I was saying that shit when I was a kid, bro. And so yeah. melodies is important uh a melody to me is 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 uh is it's you know it's like playing on a different instrument so it's a part of my production so lots of times i lay the melody first or cadence or whatever y'all want to call it pocket you know for some rappers or whatever i lay that first and then i pin it because it's got to fit with the production and if it don't fit with the production that's cool you know what i'm saying so now you got some some dope sentences that that just don't fit you feel me? So melodies first. Melodies is everything to me. So like <clears throat> writing a hook. So you like going off of more of a hook first, or creating a hook, and then writing the melodies and you know and 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 the beat. I used to do that. Uh, find a hook first. I used to. Um, it's not often that I do that unless the hook is going first. But for me, it's about finding the best fifteen seconds 
and then once I got that, it's about finding the best 30. And then from there, the best 45. And then within in a minute, we better be in that hook. And that hook has to be a smash. You know, some people might just say, oh, write a hook and then write a better hook and then write a better hook. That works too. But for me, I got to make sure them first 15 minutes, uh, 15 seconds is, is smacking. Elsewise, you know, we're going to lose it. Because y'all remember back in the day, when new music came out, that was a CD, bam, you hit play, and you just, just skim it through to see what you might like. You ain't even heard it. That's that first 15 second rule. So I got to get you interested in 15 seconds. If not, I lost you. It don't even matter about the hook no more because you ain't going to hear it. Replay value. Dope. Dope. You know what I'm saying? Anybody got any so other wanted... questions? That's a fact. Yeah. yeah, I got a question, bro. So I see you work with younger artists to older artists. Do you feel like it's... uh? easier or harder to make tracks for a younger artist versus the older artist when it comes to like giving them that hit that sound well of course the older artists um uh, you know as 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 adults we we tend to get stuck in our ways we get tired of learning and sometimes we bring that into the studio we also bring in uh i'm older than you mentality etc there's so many things as adults you know when, when you grown it's hard to try to teach a grown person something they don't want to learn you know what i mean I still, as a music producer, find a way to to get inside their head and get what I want. Uh, you know, versus a young person, you know, I just have them come in like, "Hey, just trust the process. Let's go." You know what I'm saying? And so, um, um, and then sometimes, you know, with them older ones, uh, or celebrities, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whatever who's worked, sometimes I ain't got no patience with them. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you gotta. Yeah, sometimes you gotta hand it. To, I hand, listen, I handed it to two people in the last last week. You know what I mean? And 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 I I really felt like I was doing them a favor by giving them some real because sometimes you can get so comfortable with what you're doing and so successful that you got a bunch of yes people around your team or on your team. And, yeah, and, and it's because, yeah, and it's because of that that you can't really break through the cracks like you once did or are trying to do. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but. People gotta understand, yo, the power of a of a, of a producer. Chris Brown can't let a record out without a producer. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Tory Lanez can't do it without a, a, a producer. Anybody y'all could think of. Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Like, so people don't understand how powerful the producer. Yeah, he may not be in all the music videos with y'all, but he owns those masters until you or your label buy buy it from him, and he also get to say, no. Nah, I'm not taking five dollars for it. I need a hundred dollars, or I need a hundred million, whatever it is. You feel me? And so, um, that's just that. Uh, I probably went all around the question, but I, I felt I felt the need to say that. Nah, that's a yeah, that, yeah, definitely dope. I uh, appreciate you saying that. I think that's gonna uh, help a lot of artists out that understand the music business. Cause a lot of people they they you know they make music, but they don't think of that that part of it. Absolutely. But I will say those older artists, they should want to be, you know, a, a producer like you, a super producer, to change that sound, to bring them into revelant time. So they should be all in. Yeah. Well, that's that. And and, and music to me is math, bro. <laughs> At some point, when you start counting to one, you're going to turn, you're going to get to zero and have to get back to one again. You know what I'm saying? Now, with this, a lot of people have these sounds or in the head of what they might want to hear and sometimes they don't understand that that sound is dated or it's it just ain't cool you know what i mean or when you present a new sound that they might not know is is dope because they listening to uh what drake got on the radio right now it's like yo drake did that four years ago <laughs> he's in the studio right now working on some shit like i'm presenting to you right now you know what i'm saying you run into a lot of people like that who just don't understand the, the uh that certain shit is a, is a timing thing. And I'm in the studio down to 24-7 every day. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm connected with all, all of the dope producers out here. Like, we know each other. We can call each other on the phone to talk. And we talk about what we got going on. So it's like, I know the new sound is coming out. And a lot of times, I put it on some artists and they don't know it yet. And so it's like, okay, you in your way. <laughs> you in your way. You know what I'm saying? And, Sometimes and it, you go on over their head. You yeah, head. they ain't catching it. Yeah, and, and people gotta understand, like yo, and and then sometimes some some music, especially in this rap game, is is you know it, it, it can get dated real fast. It's like you working on this stuff. You gotta look. I know when I make certain records, like I, right, if this gonna go, I gotta drop it like soon. 
because two, three, four, five years from now, the value of it would would have went down because I'm just using this today's music sound. But then sometimes I make certain records like I know it's gonna pop. Now we can sit and hold this five, six, ten years. You know what I mean? And so that's what's important. That, but this, these are the reasons why you have to trust your 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 producer. You gotta trust. And so I've had a lot of people who come in the studio and it have beat up on me. I still got what I needed out of them, but it, I had it just took so long to get it. But you know what? They pay for that. <laughs> I had somebody who came in the studio with me and ain't had a pot to piss in and was giving me a headache, I washed my hands from it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not paying me enough to have a headache tonight. I could be sitting at home watching Power. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, anybody got any other questions? I do. So, Lerod, you went from being uh, a musician to a producer and now an artist. What What was your What made you go into becoming an artist, and when did you just, you know decide to do that? What was your uh, motivate? My, my motivation was going broke. <laughs> so, uh, so I retired like 2017 as a musician. All right. I'm like, all right, I'm not touring nobody else. I ain't actually a tour is getting ready to uh, take off. And that's when I quit. You know what I'm saying? They about to be doing uh, six days a week for like four months. Right. So I quit and I was just pretty much living off what I had. But I had studio and I signed the artist. And, and uh, long story short, uh, uh, my old management uh, was involved with me and uh the artist. So, so long story short, the this artist, I was I was funding their career. You know what I'm saying? And the end result was to do a partnership uh, with with the label, which we did get on the table. I got two million on the table. I spent all my bread, and 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 within that time, uh, we should have been good. I should have closed. Got that two mil, been out the out the door. Everybody happy. But what happened was my old management uh, tried to take the deal, you know, under the table from me and sign the artist direct, exiting me out the picture. <sighs> Long story short, um, we lost the deal. And so I lost everything. My cars went bye bye. I left. Uh, I lost my crib, went to the studio. And 30 days from there, I lost the studio, put everything in the storage, and I lost my storage. <laughs> and so that was that. And uh, so I was down probably about six months. I was just kind of like just moving around. And then I got back on my feet, started getting everything again. I'm back stronger than before, right? But in, during the process, I said, now, this time, I'm not going to lose. I'm going to be the artist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lose on me because I got relationships um, on, on the executive side of the music. And I know what it takes to, to uh, you know, build an artist. And, and and to get some money, you gotta. I know I know what the profile has to look like. And so, with that being said, uh, I signed myself. I signed myself to the to my production company. Uh, in the meantime, still signing other artists. Uh, like Seventeen Cartier, Flick Your Mic. He's on the stage. He's one of my uh my rappers who's from Chicago. Lit. Yeah. You know, want to get some pieces from the artists of yours? <laughs> oh, it's too easy. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody so, got any other questions? Yeah, I have another question. Um, as far as um, features and uh, with your new music and all that, um, what are some features? Uh, if you you know you can kind of give us the features of people that you are working with currently as an artist. Um, music Soul Child, that's already out. Um, Fresh, that's already out. Uh, King Los, that's out. Um, T Pain, working on B J Chicago Kid, Tory Lanez. Miguel, and uh, that's all I can think of right now. Okay, I have one more question. Out of all three, the artist, the musician, and the producer, which one do you enjoy the most? Hmm. I actually enjoy my artistry. <laughs> I do. And why is that? <laughs> it's just fun. I, I shit. I love the, the whole creative process. I just love it. Like the best thing that ever could have happened to me was having uh having a fall and getting back up. You know what I'm saying? That's the best. Like, I I don't look at it from bitter. Like, some people can be bitter. Like, look, whenever I lose, I try to figure out I, why did I lose, how how can I strengthen it, and also what was the message. You know what I'm saying? And so, with that being said, I probably would have never went into my artistry if if I'd have just been okay. Uh, you know, with especially with the producing and everything, right? I look up, it's like, well, shit, I got nice cars, I live in a nice neighborhood, I got a studio. And I'm 
I'm working with other artists. You know what I'm saying? I'd pro- I would probably have still been trying to make records for other, you know what I'm saying, for artists. And so me falling and, and, and getting up, I just thought I was just going to be a rapper. I had no clue that, yo, no, you about to be singing too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I love it. Like we, there's some 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 records um, that that were made, and it just it just allowed me to express myself differently. Okay, and so this is like a three part question, but this is one of the questions that I always love to ask anybody who's excelling in a certain area. Um, if you had to give your younger self advice or another, let's say, um, and there's three parts of you, right? The musician, the artist, and the producer. What would that advice be? What have, what have you learned along the way? Which would uh, be like the biggest nugget that you could give some, or even your younger self? Mm, that's a good question. I mean, that's that's probably a three. There's, there's, there's a lot of nuggets out of that young boy. <laughs> yeah, that's why I asked because I feel like yeah. so many people, you know, they don't know what direction to go in, how to stay focused, um, and just what to use to motivate them. What you know, writer's block, any of that, like so. Yeah pull from uh, that. I, I, I would have told myself to get here faster. I would have told myself to get here faster, uh, especially on the artistry side. It's like, um, so being a, a multi-instrumentalist, like it, like growing up in Chicago, right, uh, I, I've known how to play keys or guitar, but like, let's say they called me in to do uh, rehearsals for whatever we're about to do, and they want me playing bass, right? I play bass, but then sometimes when you know, guys are going for lunch and all that. They would get mad if you like play the, the guitar, the keys, etc. But really, what it was is, it you know, it was intimidating. Uh, Chicago is not the place for to be a multi instrumentalist. Um, so when I got here, uh, uh, I was playing musical chairs with uh, Warren Campbell, and I was a little nervous. He's like, "Oh man, no, this is the this this is the city for it." And we just like, I got on the bass, he got on the drums. He got on the piano, I got on the guitar, I got on the drums, he got on the ukulele. I'm, mean, you know what I'm saying? We just bouncing around instruments like wow. And that that itself is saying, yo, we're being free to be creative. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So out of I I would have unlocked my 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 creativity and the process uh to my younger guy and also told myself, hey bro, uh you had the potentials to 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 ruling the land so now you you need to move in such a way and, and stop thinking uh like a deacon <laughs> you know what i'm saying you was like an innovator you was ahead of yeah. your time with that yeah bro you was ahead of your time with that you would have yeah. been you, you know you would have set a, you would have set some uh, a lot of precedent you feel me so so even still it's like the younger guy like will wait on my my brother to play guitar on this record <laughs> Or my other brother to play keys. It's like, bro, you play it already. You know how to do these things. Stop waiting. Go ahead and do it and get it done. You know what I'm saying? And so my, my telling my younger self would be get it done and stop procrastinating uh, uh, pro- procrastinate. But also also the key thing, have a little bit more patience. That part right there. Good advice. Yeah, I like that. Anybody else got any questions? I wanna hear the song, man. All right, mm-hmm. hey, we about to play the song. Get to yeah, it, man. I appreciate fire, Lil Rod for coming through, showing us love. Hey, Lil Rod, shout out your social media one more time for us. Lil Rod made it. L I L R O D M A D E I T. Lil Rod made it everywhere. Hey, bro, hey, this is all Almighty. I just want to let you know that's all fire, bro. Y'all, y'all, y'all took a stretch with them ad libs. You feel me? But that shit even sound good on a bass. Me, so keep doing what you're doing. Are you talking about over me? Yeah. <laughs> hey, so look. <laughs> Yeah, bro, so, with them ad-libs, so, I was like, damn. So, so, so none of the guys knew that them ad libs was on there until it came out. <laughs> that shit was fire, though, my nigga. I'm Appreciate like, it, man. It sounded so clean on that shit, and y'all going, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me just basically having fun, and 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 you got to be careful because some 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 artists or rappers be like very particular of, of somebody ad libbing on their parts, and I'm like, look. I look at this overall as a producer first. So, so with that being said, that's that. You know, I did the beat, did the ad libs, and you know, we all collaborative, uh, sang or, or rapped on it. I also mixed it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, it's official, bro. Salute. Yeah, appreciate it. Peace to the stage. Hey, Lil Rock, can I ask you one more question before we get to your song, bro? Yeah. Uh, as a like, I'm an artist, and I just like learn how to engineer, and I've been recording myself. Like, how do you step into those those different elements? Like, now, when I was an artist and just going to the studio, I was able to, you know, do my thing, be creative. But now I feel myself, like, being more technical, like, trying to, it, it gets hard trying to cross both. So it's like, how do you do step it. into that? 
yeah, how do you step into that artist bag and just have fun, but you still know you listening for a certain type of sound? All right, so this is hard, bro. It's extremely hard. So, um, so I and, and I get you. People don't understand that, like, yo, when you get technical, you you start losing that creativity. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And and when you cre when you creative, you can't focus on that that technical. You know what I'm saying? It's it's it's, it's a hard place. So so I start my beats in in a different uh uh doll, right? And and I started there. What I do is I make sure every technical thing is taken care of in place. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's okay. everything that I could think about. Um and and um so at this point now it should just be time to record. So at that point, once I gather in there, bam, I take a ten minute break. I don't even want to hear the music, bro, because once I hear it, I start hearing ideas and then Thanks. I lose it fast. So what I do is I smoke, smoke some weed, and I don't even like being high. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so once I smoke some weed, like I literally need to be behind the mic at that, like hit play. And that's the, I don't even like people engineering me because they engineer too slow at that point. Because now all the ideas are yeah, like that. Yeah. So when I when I smoke weed, what happens is I I get off the technical side, the executive side, and I just let open my up. head down. Yeah, Come open up. Up. relax, yeah. Huh, guy. Yeah, relax. you know what I'm saying? Just yeah. Yep. yeah. But then the flip side is, don't come to me with no technical shit when I'm high. <laughs> yeah, nah, for real. Hey, 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 so look. You about so to look. blow my shit. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, so look, I was in the studio with this artist last week, yeah, and so I do the beat, right? And so she had the nerve to get, feel some type of way, because I had a, a, a co-writer come in, like, yo, artist, let me let me tell y'all something. Just because you're an artist, that mean that you're supposed to write your record. <laughs> As a music producer, I just took a 100% a, a of the song from somebody. Somebody did a whole beat and wrote the lyrics. It was so freaking dope that I took it. <laughs> you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's about having a great record. So I got a co-writer come in, right? At this rate, um, she feeling some type of way, but all good. So bam, I'm finished with the music. So now I tell old girl to go in, the artist. I'm like, yo, go ahead and lay. Uh, let me hear some melodies. So the song is about 64 bars. For 64 bars, she's saying the same eight bars over and over and over. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, let me get another pass. Same thing. I, then I asked for So she did three passes. And then uh, my co-writer went in there. I just feel like she didn't really want to add no value seeing that old girl was a little funky. You're right. So now I'm like, all right, cool. I, I hate being high while I'm, while I'm producing, right? All right, cool. So I'm like, all right, cool. Roll up. <laughs> Bam. I get in there, land the melodies. They lighten up. You can see, like, now they want to sing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. Nah, so, <laughs> so, all right, cool. So, the, the, my second or third pass, I let them both in with me. Bam. We got some dope ass melodies. So, we got three takes to uh, go from. And at that rate, we start getting into it over some auto tune issues. She was in her way. You know what I'm saying? And at yeah. this rate, I can't really get unhigh to tell her in a way, you know, that that you know that, that may work for her to understand that we fit the cup with this. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? And so so, you know, I I just couldn't really be the professional producer, you know, people don't understand being a producer, you you low key have to almost be like a psychiatrist. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you gotta you, you know you gotta get this by all any means necessary. And sometimes you gotta figure out a way to the trick one's mind to get, you know, the best out of them. And, and and I'm high. I don't have the capacity to think like that. It's it's more, my my mentality is almost like, look, would you just fucking cut it? Mine go <laughs> right, bro. But I feel yeah, like we like, gonna use this, hit the joint again. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so, cause cause later, on, look, if you don't cut with that tune later on, I see I cut with the tune for so many reasons. All right, and I actually print. I print because if you take that session to somebody else's studio and they don't have the same auto tune as I got, you hit play, then you like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> and, that and, yeah, that shit sounds crazy. And, yeah, and, and, and it's not a good look on the artist. It's not. So I print through it. You know what I mean? And that's just that. And 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 then if you don't, what happens is later on, we thought you sang the note right, and it's one step down that I can't melt down that shit right it turns into a, a huge headache in in um in um post-production so fuck that as much as we can do right now making this record sound like it's ready to be dropped right now that's what we do elsewise 
That you know what I mean, and we not getting no bounces when we leave the studio. Not not yeah, sound like this. We gotta keep coming back. We gotta yeah. keep coming back, doing it over, doing it over. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but my bad. I I didn't mean mean to take a left turn with that. Nah, nah. You you, you, you got it. You answered that shit. That that was perfect, bro. And I got one more question. Like, how do you how do you come back to a record? Like, I heard you mention, you know, you worked on the record, and y'all come back. Like, how do you either match that energy, or you know how it is. You might did it in one cadence. Like, how do you come back to a record? Uh, it just depends. I go for vibes over anything. Sometimes you can clean a record up too too nice, and it has no feeling. So um, sometimes I'll come back, and if I feel like it, it, that was it, I'll just fix a line or two here and there. Not necessarily recut the whole gotcha. record. You know what I'm saying? So I just fix the whole line. Uh, too. I, I like to do that. I like to come back to records sometimes once I'm not having them on. <laughs> and hell, depending on what it, it is, I might actually just recut the whole record. You know what I'm saying? It just depends. If, if, if it felt organically good, leave that shit alone. Facts. Okay. That, people need to learn. Leave that shit alone. Dot com. Stick to the front. <laughs> nah, for real, I got you. Yeah. Is that Bruce at the bottom, Lerod? That your yeah, but thing? yeah, yeah, but he's probably in the mall shopping, so it's probably loud. It's probably why he don't want to oh, come okay. up. Just... Bruce, raise raise your hand if you want to come up. I see. He's 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 in uh, L.A. this week, so uh uh I produce uh Sparkle, who he manages, um, and we're shooting for a video. Uh, one of her one of her songs. We're shooting it this week, and so. They at the mall shopping, getting the best outfit one could buy, so y'all can go uh, <laughs> view the view the video, like it, count and share it, and all that. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I'm trying to hear some more from your camp. There's only in a green hat. Look like he ready to go crazy. Oh man, listen. If if my sound was working over here, I play some. I don't I don't think it's working. Norm, normally I got, I got everything hooked up, uh, but for some reason it won't let me play nothing. You gonna build. Cause I sure, huh? I sure was, I said I sure was about to ask you to play a, a piece of my favorite song, Love Language, but it's all good. Uh, man, we appreciate you coming through, Lil Rod. Definitely gonna have to touch bases again. You know what I mean? Um, get an update on the album, and um, even um, get in tune with your artist. We we'll probably should do an interview with him too. And uh, man, we appreciate you coming through, man. Showing love, Chicago's on. Lil Rod, man, y'all get in tune. Y'all go follow him on all social media platforms right now. Absolutely, I appreciate that. Peace to the room. I, I appreciate everybody. And if y'all can go, go to my IG, like the last post, leave a comment, or on the on the actual video, leave a comment, like, subscribe. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, as a, as a as a as a music producer. Uh, I made some noise in this game, but as an artist, I'm fresh. So I gotta I gotta grind it from the bottom like everybody else. So I can I really appreciate y'all support. Salute. No doubt. Salute.